parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we have a wild one. We talk to Tom Filsinger of Filsinger Games. We check in with Michael the Bomber Facade. We've got a Vimeo. We talk indie wrestling, early experiences with Ring of Honor, London Calling, all that, and so much more. Stick around. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 366. We got a hot one scheduled for you tonight. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Yeah. I am slightly yes. Slightly. Some of us full on, eh? Later uh, in the show, we have scheduled to talk with... Tom Filsinger of Filsinger Games, the great uh, card game company that's brought Champions of the Galaxy. But more important to this show, Legends, uh, Champions of Wrestling. Uh, let, I'm messing it up. I'm switching on Legends of Wrestling, Chikara, Ring of Honor, and a lot of other that are going to be a little bit surprising. If you're into indie wrestling and you like card stuff and Dungeons and & Dragons, I think this is going to be for you. It's definitely for uh, DJ Lunchbox, who joins us from the Neon Factory over on the north side. How you doing tonight? That's right. I'm living in a neon forest, and I'm tripping balls. <laughs> tripping balls. You can fucking kiss my ass like human centipede, because that shit is stuck <laughs> in my head. Here's a weird story. So I've got a, a Childish Gambino song stuck in my head, and I've also been singing a fish song all day. And I feel like that's probably more common than I think. What do you that- think, Riz? <laughs> I think you're right. Thanks, Riz. Folks, you're welcome. Riz. Hi. <laughs> Riz joining us from the east side of the Pittsburgh. East side? Oh, wait. East side. We, nobody knows where you're pointing. <laughs> I, I'm point. I was pointing left. Now I'm pointing right. Oh God! Now we're gonna need that smart glass app where everybody's on a map, oh, just like God. Game of Thrones. Oh so no! I can, I can only see your planetary. Yeah, stuff. I only see that, planetary is that stuff. Right? Is that okay? Do the viewers? See I the only see thing? the planets, sword. I don't know. I see pla- I don't Am know. I in outer space now? I don't know, but somebody that's not learning about astronomy. Somebody that's not learning about astronomy in college is the wrestle fan because he's learning how to talk to women and change light bulbs in San Antonio, Texas. Ah, I fail. And teaching me which I fail at only one of those things. And teaching me which offensive words not to say. Yeah, apparently you can't say certain words because they're more offensive than other certain offensive words, and I, I, I can't. I, I just go to lunchbox to figure out all that, all that jazz. Your ass, your ass got schooled, little kid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We like, we just like to fan around, power around, talk about some wrestling. Yeah, talk to wrestlers. Yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, about wrestling actually, things. We'll talk about wrestling. We talked to a wrestler later in the show uh, where That's we talked cool. the facade at WrestleCon and see some of that too. Uh, and then how crazy that went. Zombies are involved. You'll see how. Oh, shit. Um, but this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're Wait, over is Freight at. Freight Train a zombie? What? Is Freight Train a zombie? Freight Train's Freight not a train zombie. Freight Train is a string Dude, bean. I'm going to leave your string brain. Bean. String bean. It could be a zombie bean. string bean. That, that, that's a potential. Oh, that's uh, so. But we're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can check out everything going on. Good time. Mad Mike's. No, not good that. Time. You guys are early. Okay. You're premature good timing. Good times. Good times. Good times. Uh, but <laughs> we're over there. Uh, uh, you can check us out on oh, iTunes, yeah, MS Stitcher. Zero. Spreaker, yeah. Blip TV, Roku, and YouTube, and video and audio formats. Uh, um, by the app. No, we're not there yet. You can then oh. email us at, at. By the app. app. Um, email what? us <laughs> at. <laughs> Tell your ass, dude. Something. We're on Spreaker <laughs> and Roku. Email us at. Oh. Good times! Uh, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. You can also... Buy the app? Uh, Buy the buy app. app! The iPhone yeah. app on your iOS on Amazon WMS Zero. App Store. I love that we've so all had oh to learn from wrestling. Oh, somebody just read an email. I love that please. we've all had a stroke at please. the same time. Please, please. At, at, you can follow us at Mayhem Show. Sorg, what have you learned from wrestling? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, oh, no. Not this week. 
<laughs> Somebody read an email. Well, the ending minute for this week. No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember no, when? I got one. I got one. Uh, we have one from our good pal of the mainstream media, Mr. Matt Carlins. Eat it. I will. He says, hey, WMSers. Just wanted to let you know that I've been working under my journalist hat over the last couple days to confirm the reports online that the 2014 Royal Rumble will be held in Pittsburgh. Woo! Sadly, no one I spoke with is willing to go on the record. Aww. That doesn't mean it's not true. Huh? I believe in Matt Carlin's. (laughs) (laughs) Matt Carlin's, we believe in you. Because he's mainstream. This This is Matt Carlin's America. Just the way things work. Your mainstream media homeboy, Matt Carlins. P.S. I really like to see someone on the show yodel like Antonio Cesaro, preferably DJ Lunchbox. Smiley face. Well, Lunchbox is the distant relative of Antonio Cesaro. That's we, very we dis- true. And I'm we discovered an this. Yodeler. You should yodel a Childish Gambino song. I'm gonna do it right now. Ready? Do it. Bye. Did you like it? It was good. That was beautiful. It's amazing how it continued, even though you started talking to us again. (laughs) But that that was pretty good. But I I think I heard that before. It seems familiar. It seems familiar. Does it seem familiar? Did did you you try to hike up a mountain that was like very smooth once in a while? Did it seem, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then did you fall off a cliff like, Twice or very rarely, only when really stupid people play. And did <laughs> did you have to guess the price of a toaster oven? Toaster oven, toaster Son, oven, really? What the no, fuck? you're watching goddamn Drew Carey episodes and shit. <laughs> wave Runner today, man. Yeah, you never did toaster oven and fucking suck Wave on Runner. Dick. Bob Barker, son. <laughs> the price is wrong, bitch. I don't maybe, even know. Maybe next week, but I'm not <laughs> what the fuck is happening to the show? Hey, 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 hey. I'm just skipping all over the app in the the notes, <laughs> and I've gone right past it. It's me, it's me, it's fat of the year, big PPC. So yeah, busy week. Not much in the email this week. I enjoyed Raw. Smackdown was decent. TNA was okay. Raw. Not to ship it. Sorry. It does, it does say it, it's capital R O A. Raw. Raw. Not to ship it. Raw, once again, mainly for fan support and interaction, was fun like it normally is in England. Uh, where I am not from, I am from different area. Shield was awesome. Brock versus Triple H, I guess, is exciting, but not really. Ryback versus Cena. We will see how this goes, and if I buy into it, I think they could easily have had a Rock rematch against John Cena, but since Rock got hurt, they filled that role to Ryback. Why did you have to be heel? Ugh, because he's facing Super Cena. Ugh. So, questions this week. If, if each mayhem crew individual on the show could pick one match extreme would rule <laughs> whatever they want style each and make the card for extreme rules who would it be example coffee versus barrett in a no holds bar table match team hill no versus the shield primetime players versus primo and epico rose on the pole match haha <laughs> Yeah, I heard she got kicked off European tour because she was drunk like the whole time. Hey, hey, hey. Till next week, it's me. It's me. It's it. Big PPC. Sent from my effing. And is anybody else's font very different? Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird okay. this week. I, I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, <laughs> I just copied and pasted. Wait, what you really want us to No, no, it's really in the email. To... It's in the email. Ooh. I don't know about that. Though. So the question. The question. 
Extreme Rules match. Pick an Extreme Rules match. I would love to see William Regal versus Wade Bennett in a, uh, 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 I don't know, London Street Fight or something where they can use brass knuckles and Oh, that'd and, be cool. Uh, what not? That'd be cool. A London Street Fight ladder match! A Paul London Street Fight? A tea bag on a pole match. Oh, that would be a bad. Fucking queen on the queen hang. The queen hangs above the ring uh, in a TARDIS, and they have to get her down. <laughs> I can see. Riz, that. is it? I think was that the original plan for the Duchess of Queensberry match? Get the fuck out of here, Riz! <laughs> Wait, why are you telling me that? No, I'm saying, oh, oh, rest oh, the um, get the fuck out of here, Riz. Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm demanding tonight. We need a good scaffolding scaffold match. Ooh, Jesus. holy crap! Big Show and Mark Henry. <laughs> what in scaffolding holy match? Fuck. Yes, I'm, su- I'm surprised you didn't say the Great Kali and the Great Kali. Mm, there you go. Just, no, he'll break a hip. Just the sing the, the sing the lyrics while they come down. Wow. How about you, Wrestle Fam? You got one. Uh, I want to do a tag team match, a not just a tag team match, because uh, okay. that's not the extreme <laughs> stipulation. Uh, a tag this, team. I, I can't wait. A tag team chocolate pudding match. What? Uh, with Brodus Clay and uh, Lord Tensai mm-hmm. or Sweet Tea uh, against Damian Sandow and Cody Rhodes, and then and then Damian and Cody want none of their shenanigans, and they just walk nope. out. Nope, I, you gave me a great idea. But fucking no. chocolate pudding match, our truth versus Kofi Kingston. Nobody oh. knows what's happening. Oh. Nobody knows at any time what's going on. They love the black guys now. Boom! They grew, they grew a stick up their butt, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna push all the black guys on our roster." This is happening. Whoa! Wow! wow. Uh, let me bring it down. I got you. I got you. I got you. How about uh, Caitlyn versus AJ in a first blood match? Yes, yes, wrestle till you have your period. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh that, that won't happen because they're synced. Oh, they're in sync. Also, AJ's too young. <laughs> uh, yeah. too young. All right, so we got another email here. Well, uh, first of the, there's, a, there's a couple in the chat room. Uh, Randy, Orton, Randy Orton versus R Truth in a What's My Line match mm-hmm. from Alexander. Uh, 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 Randy Orton versus R Truth in a loser leaves the WWE match. They both just walk out because they're losers. From Bobby of J Town, uh, and then uh, Alexander Cars also says uh, Chris Boss of PWG fame says a sucks suck our Cox match. What? That's a th- that's a thing that happens apparently. What? All right. On that note, we have a pretty hefty email here from our friend from London. It's a Vim mail, the original emailer. I believe. Hey! No, that's the wrong accent completely. Um, I, I wasn't trying to do an accent, but okay. <laughs> Wait, were you reading the I'm big just big going, hey! You were trying to be the Fonz. <laughs> that also, or Big BBC, I'm not sure which. Not from London. Uh, hello, all greetings from London. I was at Raw this past week, and I have some thoughts, and I'm going to try to poke you guys into discussing things a touch deeper than you have been doing. Every time I do ask a question, please do debate it before going to my answer, which will, of course, be the correct answer. Damn. I almost, I, maybe we should just make this our roundtable. Um, he's not He's not wrong. No, he's not. No, he's not. Uh, Firstly, The Rock uh, returning like he did uh, and getting injured like he did is going to put a huge net into his movie career. If there has, uh, has to be rescheduling of the filming for Hercules, then he will no longer be looking looked at as a reliable movie star. Uh, This could have two effects on him. Either he never returns to wrestling again as it's uh, too much of a risk, or he results in a much more regular capacity uh, as he won't be uh, taking the movie uh, bookings. Time will tell. That's a good question. That's a really good question. Uh, Roth? Yeah, from him. I mean, it was like the the same questions kind of came up when you had like Dennis Rodman and, and Carl Malone uh, doing doing those matches because they're like, well, if they get hurt wrestling, then they're screwed for NBA, you know, and nobody's yeah. gonna let them do anything anymore, you know. Uh, same with the football guys, you know, they're like, don't get injured Steve doing the wrestling. Mongo McMichael, 
Well, no, he, was, he didn't have a career. Perry. But like, Kev, yeah, like all those guys that were in the Battle Royal, or or Kevin Green when he did that match with Mongo McMichael, he was still uh, LT. Part of LT LT exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, Fucking, uh, what was that little shit's name who punched Big Show in the mouth? Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather. Floyd, no, Floyd he Mayweather, got paid yeah. enough; it was worth it. And and they and they fight like every like six months. So. It's because it takes them that long to recover. <laughs> right. You get hit in the face for 10 minutes and see how long it takes you to recover. Uh, Raw from yeah. London was a fun show. WB does, n- does know how to put on events. Uh, the crowd was hot at several points, but it hasn't come across that way on TV. I guess that it, this is because we were reacting to certain stars that WWE does not want to promote as main event yet. Ooh. Why would there be a Raw in London without the only UK-based champion on it? Last time out, he had a monster reaction. Huge. And now he's not even on the show. Uh, has the office been vindictive and taken away a great moment from the crowd in him? Or just completely fucking stupid? I, for one, was very disappointed that he wasn't there and there were many in the crowd with me. Yeah, there was. they were kind of missing that big like London feel we usually get. Yeah. I thought. Or is this a... Or is this a symptom of them having the three-hour Raws and they're just not able to do it as well anymore? Maybe. I, I think – well, that's the, that's the thing. The only time I think it felt like a London Raw was it during Fandango's match when William William Regal's music hit. And, what happened? Uh, and everyone was like, oh, shit, it's William Regal because of London. Hey, he jobbed. I mean, jobbed, yeah. yeah he usually I mean, jobs in London, though, or he, like, wins a yeah, title. Usually they, like – he has a good match. You know, yeah. I mean that was he, he wasn't breaking fingers like Cash is Ono. Hmm. Nobody watches NXT. Raw I can hate all of you. <laughs> Raw is the <laughs> flagship show, and it follows uh, that those that are booked on the strong uh, uh, booked to be strong on the show are the stars of the company. Based on this live show, Triple H, The Undertaker, Cena, and maybe The Shield were booked strong. Those that looked weak and worse inconsequential were. Ryder, Tons of Funk, uh, Sandow, Rhodes, R-Truth, and any woman apart from AJ. Also, add to that, Big E and the most sacrilegiously, William Regal. Jericho and Fandango had a good interaction. The crowd was not into the Fandangoing as I was hoping they would have been. Really, they came across like they were on TV. Yeah, I saw a lot of dancing. I saw a lot of dancing. It looked like it was as strong as New Jersey. Ted Danson? No. I love Ted Danson. No, 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 you know, he no, played no. Hellboy. Yeah. Fucking Hellboy. Well, I'll check Wikipedia yeah. for that one. Um, you won't find it. <laughs> <laughs> if, the office, <laughs> if the office are keen on him being booed, then have him against Wade on the tour, and he's the most hated ever in the crowd, can be called on doing the dance as a way of mocking him. Uh, good heel heat, good crowd rea- uh, interaction, and this is something that builds week to week city to city why would they have not done this uh, they lack British sensibility they mm. want us to like what we want what they want I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> I'm sorry it's okay lunchbox I, I'm trying to figure the, the, the interaction because I mean, the because it looks like they were completely behind it even though well, we, they were fan dangling through the night yeah. They were all laying, but they were in England, so that's fine. Although I loved an El, at El Generico uh, filtered through on the uh, WWE Access feed on one of the main uh, highlighted ones when they were all laying. So mm. huh. somebody knows. Uh, Dolph had the match of the night with Jericho, but wasn't booked strong. So what is the point of him being champion? Being strong is mostly being the one uh, stood in the ring at the end of the show with the title in your hand, standing over your opponent for the strongest. Example, remember No Mercy 2002. No, Brock Lesnar beat The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match, left him bleeding on the floor, and was last pictured on top of the cage. Literally on top of the industry. That is getting behind your champion. Stinking out wins is not. Here's your thing. Every time they give somebody the uh, money in the bank, uh, they book, They tend to book them week after. And just about every time. Look what happened to CM Punk a couple of times. Look at look at anybody. You know, They, they went under quick. They lose matches. You, they 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 do whatever they can to make it's, it's well. No, I, I think it's not just that. I think it's that that's the formula with any champion that they do right now. Is that we have to have them lose matches because then it builds builds feuds to a title yeah, match. That's weird. 
That's they weird. always lose. Champions always lose non-title matches for whatever fucking reason. Yeah. Uh, there's a simple solution that plays to making Cena Batman rather than Superman, and he could just. It could say just that, uh, that he knew Ryback would be a threat to his WWE title one day, so he stands by and waits and helps only when he must. He's uh, spent the last few months telling us how much the title means to him, so you use that and lead into character development. My only problem with Cena is that he is essentially the same he was in 2003. Compare that to CM Punk and the way he has developed guys like... Uh, H H Triple H and Undertaker have continued personal development over the years, and Cena just hasn't. Why do you think this is? Uh, it's like they cheese it. They tease it with uh, like the Kane embrace the hate thing. Like, oh, this is gonna be the thing, and no, no, they pull back. Yeah, you know, uh, they, they did that with they did that with Cena and Rock. They're like, oh, he's been vulnerable this whole year, and he's, you know, he's, you know, this has been a horrible year for him, and he's gotta, you know, <laughs> just. But, but it it's very, you know. I, I I don't know what the word is. It's not manufactured. It's just the they they don't want to like put the time into actually developing that, but yeah. they just want they just say it and they just jump to it. I don't know. I think it still goes to they're going to make money with him just doing what he does, and as soon as they don't do that, that's when their back will be up against the wall and something different happens. When the kids stop buying Cena T-shirts, or he gets so injured he can't wrestle for like a year, that's when something different happens, and, and it will at, not. At- Look at everybody he's faced in the past few months mm-hmm. being seen. Him. CM Punk, out. Mm-hmm. The Rock, out for maybe a long time. And there's nobody really ready for him. So instead of turning him heel, which everybody wants him to do, they're turning Ryback and making him part of Team Rocket. Yeah, I, I saw something uh, mentioned it before. Uh, I, I, and the whole uh, everyone wants to see Cena turn heel. I think to a degree, yeah, because it's just something more interesting. John Cena is a heel. The, the, he, he, well, when I say that, he all, he has heel tendencies. Like his character, he can be very cocky at times, and he, you know, that's just part of his character. And he's still, I mean, he's definitely still a face, but it's just, you know, it's it's still complex. I think. I think this. I think people take the Cena character a bit too lightly. I don't think with the Ryback char- with this feud with Ryback, he's being very complex. But you know, he does ha- have complexities to him. Yeah, <laughs> he's not complex yet. He has complexities. <laughs> he has complexities. Well, he's he's not showing. He's not showing complexities. I, 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 I see what you're getting at. I'm just. It was just an interesting. He has configuration complex of ten. words. What's that? He, he has complex attributes. That yeah. make him who he is. Sure. Just like everybody else. <laughs> Just like everybody else, like me. I have not I'm about complex. Randy Orton. Randy, what what, is, what is complex about Randy Orton? The fact that he would be a great fucking performer, incredibly interesting healed. and talented if he was a fucking heel. He and if they did something the with him instead of letting him flounder and fucking fight Sheamus for the rest of his life. He still wasn't really complex, though. I mean, he was I good. I still go he back to this. Guys, I still go back to this. You have too many top guys, and they have to do something and not be a top guy for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, floundering is not being a top guy for a while. Something will come around. Orton's one of those guys they'll bring in wherever they need a challenger for some heel for some reason, randomly, and uh, and, and and they'll come back around and be like, hey, it's time for Orton to get the belt again. It, just, it's that's I, the way it is with these guys. Cena went away and did other things for a while. Unfortunately, he's Cena, so he's always on top of the card belt or not. But still, uh, Sheamus is going away and doing something else for a while. Big Show goes away, comes back, punches somebody in the head, and gets a belt for a couple months. You you know, whenever they need. These are utility guys. You know, they're all on the top. I, I, and and, I, and, and then, then that's where guys like your Zack Ryder's and Wayne Bears don't pop up until they become one of those guys that can cycle back and forth. You know, that it, it, it's really the like glass edge. The glass ceiling, above the glass ceiling, is so full, it's even harder to get in there until a but bunch this, of them get hurt. This is like the prime of Randy Orton's career, though. I think yeah. he's just being wasted right now. Yeah. 
Like, but, but then you don't know. Maybe it's something because you always hear like maybe something's going on with him. You know. Yeah, and, and you don't like, know what's going on in the back. Just maybe, like you said, maybe he's pissed somebody off. You don't know. There's the politics maybe, going. Into maybe it. he pooped in someone's book bag or <laughs> gym bag. Bag bag again. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe he has, he's going over he has his failed the wellness sure he thing his line. Yeah. But still, but still, it's. Like what you said, Sorg, about Randy Orton. Uh, every time he does get a push, though, it seems like there's something that says, "Hey, I'm going to get in trouble," and he gets in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it too. I, I, how many guys? How many guys with two failures in the wellness policy of the three strikes and you're out rule um, are consistently your top dude at a pay per view? Anybody? Ray Mysterio. Ray Mysterio? <laughs> Nah, yeah. the, he's not really, he's he, not but he hasn't. Him and Orton haven't had like the top spot in a while. Exactly, Ray, or, and I they've mean, had two strikes for a long time. Ray Mysterio mm-hmm. hasn't wrestled, and then well, then he's wow. injury prone he's too, so that doesn't help either. So, um, so I he's think that's I think Mexican that's a consideration though, right? Because he's got a big case of the no knees. <laughs> what the fire hell? That wow. Okay, uh, let's finish this bag. off, guys. <laughs> uh, having said all that, this I don't. Having said all of this, I don't want you to think that I did not enjoy this show. I saw fully Triple H, Paul Heyman, Daniel Bryan, who, with his He Hugged Me with The Undertaker, was a laugh of the night, along with the best crowd line of diagrams. Uh, Kane, The Shield, Chris Jericho, and The Undertaker. Now for some questions. Ah. We didn't have enough discussion. Wait, before, <laughs> before, we, get, before we get the uh, questions... The shield came in on a helicopter because oh, legitimately yeah. they were coming from the SmackDown show. Uh, I understand. Oh, I didn't see who else. There's a couple of divas or something that were in the in there with them that they didn't show when they came in. I think they were like they. We needed to get them from this show. It was the probably show. the Bellas I, sucking I them beans. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can look it up. I'll see if I can look, look that up later in the show, uh, or somebody else can while I'm doing this. Uh, which deceased wrestler would you like to see back in the WWE today? Oh, I know this one. What do you want? Owen Hart. Mm-hmm. He would. Yeah, he would probably good. fit in any way you want him to fit in. Mm-hmm. You want him as a serious wrestler, he'll be Owen Hart. If you want him as a comedic wrestler. He can be the Blue Blazer. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter where you have him. He's gonna be. He's gonna perform to the T, mm-hmm. and he is awesome. Um, I go Macho Man. I don't know how performance based. Like if he could still go, but it'd be yeah. tremendous if he, if he was and he did. And I have a secondary one if you guys don't take it. Uh, if, I guess if we're talking people that I mean necessarily, I, I think that's necessarily thinking they're in their prime. Yeah. Um, the first one that came to my mind was. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I was, that's a good one. Looking back, I was always a big Bam Bam fan. Uh, like looking back on stuff, I loved everything he did. So, <laughs> looking back on YouTube. Yeah. Well, since you said it. <laughs> well, that's legit because it, it definitely like Bam Bam didn't have much. He like he's during a your good time. Re- yeah, wrestling. he was a good wrestler, and he did do his part in shaping WrestleMania. Actually, he was with, one of the great big guys. He was one of the great big guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I always loved his stuff in uh, ECW. Mm-hmm. I I watched a ton of that. It was it was really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. LB, um, uh, I was watching a couple of Royal Rumbles and um, Tyson Tomko showed up. Oh wow! If you remember him, <laughs> but he's not dead. He's not dead. What? No, you're he dead. has a, he has a serious drug problem, but he's not dead. Yeah, he's, he's not dead yet. Who am I thinking of that's dead? Test, test, test. is dead. Oh, it's Test, yeah. Remember test, remember test, we reported on a story like test, a couple months ago, or not test. a couple months ago, but of uh, Tomko shooting up in a Chili's? Oh, yeah, no. I thought he died after that. No. no. Was it shooting up or was it uh, like finding a big spoon? Like, mm. Yeah, he like stole a bunch of shit and he was in a bathroom. It doesn't matter, all right? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. He's a crackhead. He's, he's not dead, but I do want to say that Tyson Tomko had a lot of potential. Uh, now I have to think of somebody else. Uh, I do agree he's with dead on the inside, man. so that's good. Chris Candido. <laughs> Candido, yeah. yeah. Chris Candido was very good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say Chris Benoit. Yeah. Which because if he, if he hadn't died the way that he did... He was doing amazing things in the yep. WWE. Yep. yep. His feud with MVP and all that stuff, and it just all went straight to hell. So, I'll throw an honorable mention out there for Mr. Perfect. 
because he was back and doing oh, great yeah. things yes. again. And it would be great yeah. to have him, maybe, maybe you know, him and his son, you know, actually doing something. Like I think that could have been kind of cool. <laughs> they would they wouldn't have named him McGillicuddy at least. For, yeah, maybe. Uh, is, is Magnum TA dead? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Are you sure yeah, about no, no. that? Yes, I, would, I, I think I think Meanie even confirmed that he's still alive. Um, so he says okay. he's doing great actually. Yeah, so. yeah, he's fifty three. Good for him. Um, Good for him. And he, oh, Vimers- I, I got one more. Yeah, Jesse the Body Ventura. He's, he's not, not dead. dead. <laughs> or is or is he? Let's, hey, it's don't a conspiracy. You tell me whether I'm alive or dead or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here asking the questions, the- Mac Man. You you oh, can't man. judge whether I'm alive or dead, gorilla. <laughs> And Vim responds, I know that you will mostly mo- mostly go with Eddie rightly, but consider nope. what would Garrison Cade be doing today in WWE? Oh. Gar- Lance Cade's another good one. Yep. Yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, that was right. But, well, I, I think he got fired. Before, but, I mean, that was remember when he was doing stuff with Jericho? Mm-hmm. Like, that yeah. was great. Who is the next sports star to have significant interaction with WWE? Chuck Palumbo. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't watch enough sports Sorry. to know. I, I don't watch sports. Sidney Crosby. He always loves the Raw when they come oh, to town. With, no. with WWE? I know. I, okay, maybe TNA. Uh, if it's TNA, then they're having fucking one Pablo Montoya back. <laughs> oh, if it's TNA, they bring back. Car driving. I, 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 I can't even think of who would be next. Uh, oh, um, I got I got somebody, but I can't figure out the name or anything else. What's it, uh fucking um really? Uh, this is what we're God, doing what a good show! Can we just call this wrestling? Frank Mir sixty six. Frank Mir. We try to think of Frank wrestlers' names. Mir. Frank Mir. There you go. Frank I, Mir. I, think, I, I thought you said Frank. I want to see. No. I don't think you get more UFC guys. I think you're going to start seeing UFC gonna, guys that have retired out getting their second career with, with wrestling, much what, like, like you get football. Like Tank guys. Abbott. Yeah, Tank Abbott. Not including Tank Abbott. Does, um, does Dave Bautista count? <laughs> there you go. I think that's going to be the thing because I mean MMA is tough, man. I I don't think there's much shelf life for the guys there. But like I'd like to not get punched in the face for real for money. Okay, I let's do this. Watch, I was thinking about that. I only started watching a few short years ago, and fucking all the guys that I knew who they were are retired now. Yeah, yeah. With the oh, handful, um, with, with the exception of like two, Forrest Griffin's still around, and I think Stephen Bonner still fights. Yeah, and those are two guys that started when I started watching. If we if, if we want to talk MMA, uh, I would love no. if WWE would capitalize on sort of like the Ronda Rousey like buzz. <laughs> Sor- Sorg's like, no, fuck this. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no, I don't even know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, I got I one. No Ronda Rousey is a chick that fucks people up. All right, know, I, I, I agree with you to a certain degree, wrestle fan, but I, I don't think she's. Gina Carano. A WWE loves models. Ronda Rousey is not a model. Yeah. It's only the, my dreams. Riz, is, Riz has something to say. What's up, Riz? Lunchbox, this one's for you. The Who is the guy with the really long beard? Grill Tyson in his Tomko. mouth. Who? Tyson no, Tomko. A, no, the MMA fighter. I know you're into M- MMA. Oh, it was in Strike... It was, it was in Strike Force? No. Oh, crap. All right. We'll figure this out on the break. All right. And his last his last question. Holy crap. We need to finish this one. Yeah, uh, okay. Will Dolph ever be, really be Wait, uh, what booked as a strong answer? champion? Well, was, he didn't have an answer well, for that one. I didn't have uh, an answer. Uh, will Dolph ever be booked as a strong yeah. champion? I think he will. I think you're, yeah, he's already doing better than CM Punk did the first time around. It was a first go around. Don't don't judge this. I, I know he had the belt before, but that doesn't count. He's already Punk being booked better than that. One time. What's that? Punk be JBL that one time. There you go. Uh, LB? What's, what's that? The, the, that... Dolph, Dolph as a strong champion in the future? No, I, somebody's like tapping Someone, the microphone. Someone's making yeah. popcorn. I have no idea. What's happening? Anyway, uh, no. Not in this title run. He's going to slip by, and he's they just randomly threw him in the middle of this other feud, and he's going to lose the belt eventually and get pissed. If he, if he gets it somewhere down the road, I could see Dolph having a career similar to Edge's. Wow. He's that guy when they really need somebody, when they don't have anybody to because of injuries or something like that, and he comes in and always a fan favorite but never explodes 
uh, and gets white hot at the level of like a, a Steve Austin or a John Cena. Mm-hmm. Who else? I- Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought you called me wheels there for a minute. No. Sorry. <laughs> um, but but no. I don't I, – I agree with uh, Lunchbox. I don't think he's going to do it this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but there's there's still potential there that he can in, you know, year, next year or so win another title and then build on from there. This is the start. This is the beginning. This is, this is, he's not, he's not peaked yet. And that's the scary thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's so good. All right. Uh, from the chat room, from that last question, uh, some names, LeBron James from Mike, uh, uh, something else. Uh, I, I'm presuming these are sports names. Chanel Sonnen, (laughs) Kimbo Slice, Lee Trevino. Kimbo Slice. That's who I Ryan Locked. 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 Ryan Lochte. All right. No, Ryan Lochte. No, no. And with that, uh, till next time, remember, I'm listening. Yes, that was all an email for the last 20 God knows how many minutes <laughs> we were talking. We, all right, we, guys, we, with that, we have to go to – that's it. The show's over. No, we have to go check out some DVD. Folks, thanks for listening. And then we'll be right back with Tom what did you from Phil from? Singer Games Mayhem Show. Remember when? We're back, Wrestling Mayhem Show, um, and uh, you know we've had a lot of great uh, interviews over the past few weeks. Uh, a bunch of the pre-recorded ones we had from WrestleCon. I uh, met a lot of great people there, and as you know, we've had a lot of kind of different kind of guests. We've had people doing comic books. We've had people doing iPhone games in the past, and I ran into you know, a name I, I've seen pop up uh, 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 quite a bit. Uh, Phil Singer Games. You may know them for the uh, card games for uh, stuff like Ring of Honor. Uh, Chikara, and of course the uh, you know Legends of Wrestling, and then the classic Champions of the Galaxy. Uh, and I happened to run in the man, the myth, the legend himself, Tom Filsinger, who joins us right now on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. How you doing this evening, sir? Fantastic. Excellent. Mainly, mainly a myth. Mainly a myth, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, um, you you run Phil Singer Games amongst. Uh, I, I understand. Is we maybe we'll get into a little bit some a few other things in the wrestling biz. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, where did this card game uh, 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 concept come from, and, and where did you guys get introduced to doing it for wrestling? I, I created it when I was in high school because I was one of those students that was always bored out of my mind in school. Mm -hmm. So I created games Mm -hmm. to pass my time in high school. And I created, I created the game system in a math class or something like that. I I put the wrestlers of that era into my game system. And I started to then play it at home with my brother and he loved it. And I thought, well, well, let me see if I can't get the WWF to buy this thing. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and I contacted them. I talked to Gorilla Monsoon. I talked to a bunch of people there. And they passed on it finally after about a year of talking to me. Mm-hmm. And they instead produced a game with uh, Milton Bradley, a, a, a board game, a children's game. <laughs> and, yeah, it was, a, you know, it, it, it was it was it simulated wrestling about as much as sitting on a lawn chair simulates being in a a racing car, mm-hmm. but I thought I'll create my own characters, and uh, I did that, and I created Champions of the Galaxy, and that's what came first. Mm-hmm. Now, it, then it came later to do the real people late because then it then I what's that? And, and then Champions of the Galaxy was it like not so much a, a wrestling game, but it seems like it's more of a uh, I, I don't know how, how would you describe describe that like more superhero-y, I'm thinking for the looks of things. Well, I think it's. Both. I think it's both. I think that it was mainly, oh yeah, because the first set had two aliens. Mm-hmm. Most the most of the characters were humanoid, mm-hmm. and I, I was really kind of worried that wrestling fans weren't going to go for it. But luckily, they did. Excellent. But um, 
Marvel Comics is very important to me. I, I grew up with Marvel Comics as much as I grew up with wrestling. And the game is a combination of both. And now more than ever, it is a combination of both. Mm-hmm. So where did, um, you know, how did you come around to finally getting, you know, back to like that first idea, that first passion and get to, uh, uh, you know, to, to the wrestling side of things? What, what was the first of these, of these uh, versions that I see on your site? The first version of Champions of the Galaxy? Uh, every year, every um, expansion of Champions of the Galaxy is another year mm-hmm. in the GWF time. Okay. So the first one came in 1986. Mm-hmm. And now I'm writing my 43rd. And so oh, that is 43 GWF years. We're on the year 2129 wow. coming up. Wow. Nice. It's very really serious history. And, and at what point did you co- uh, cross over to, like, the more traditional uh, wrestling characters? Oh, uh, you mean um, the licensed games with the real ones? Yes. Yeah. That came... I, I started to do a lot of conventions in the 90s where I'd go and sell Champions of the Galaxy, and I'd meet the wrestlers at these conventions. Mm-hmm. And I, I met people like King Kong Bundy, Greg Valentine. I told them about the game. And Bundy became a big fan, by the way, of Champions of the Galaxy. But... He said, sure, you can do a playing card for me. And I thought, you know what? If it's that easy to get King Kong Bundy, I'm just going to ask everybody. Mm -hmm. And if I get enough people, I'll release a game with the real people. in." And I did. And so I released Legends of Wrestling in 2003. Mm -hmm. And that has 24 people in that intro box set. And we've had 12 expansions of that since that came out. Wow. And I got real lucky. The guys were awesome. I mean, I signed the Road Warriors, uh, Jimmy Snuka, Ted DiBiase, Harley Race, Buddy Rogers. I mean, there have been a couple hundred people signed, and some of them are some of the biggest names in wrestling history. Mm-hmm. And that was a big question for me because, of course, we had uh, the guys with the Wrestling Manager uh, app and game uh, uh, on previously. And, of course, they have issues where they can't get a lot of the characters. So they kind of have kind of guys that kind of look like the characters. Um, yeah. How did you guys get in, uh, you know, with these guys that we know now are, are pretty much locked up with, like, Legends contracts with right. WWE? I got lucky. I guess I was asking a lot of them before the WWE was doing that. Mm-hmm started to do that more in the last several years. Some people have not been able to work with me because of that. Now. Yeah. But nonetheless, you know, I mean, real, re, realistically, there have been thousands of people in wrestling history, you know, hundreds that have been significant. And so we've signed a, a fair percentage of them. Mm-hmm. I'm real proud of the, the names we have signed. Yeah, and I definitely see guys that I wouldn't see there, like you know, a lot of uh, ECW alumni, like I saw Mike Whip- Whiprex on here, uh, but a lot of great names like 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 Jimmy Hart, Fred Blassie, like guys I know that would probably be locked up with WWF and stuff. Um, yeah. So that that's really cool that you got in on that, and that's a really good kind of like you know when you see that Road Warriors on the cover, you're like, wow, this is yeah. this is a for real thing, you know? That was all Hawk. That mm-hmm. was Hawk, mm-hmm. and Hawk was an amazing guy. And I thought, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford the road warriors, but I'll ask anyway, because you really never know. And, mm-hmm. and he said, no, 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 listen, let's work something out. And he was very creative with me. He was just an incredible guy. Mm-hmm. So how did you get connected then from there? Was it, was it just kind of a logical step to start looking at something like a Chikara or ring of honor then? Yeah. Yeah. Our game fans really led me in that direction. Our game fans are the, the best game fans around. And they love to see the growth of the company. Mm-hmm. It's a very grassroots-oriented company. And so they reached out to some of those initially, like Chikara was our first licensed game. And, uh, you know, that that's something that worked out for us. And since then, like you said, we added Ring of Honor, Shimmer, Combat Zone Wrestling, mm-hmm. Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and there will be more. Excellent, excellent, and that's 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 kind of something different because I mean, you usually don't see a lot of licensing opportunities uh, for these smaller groups like this, and I think there's something kind of building with that. Uh, Chakara has been amazing because they, they, I mean, they have I don't know how many I, iPhone apps, and you just see a lot of good professional looking material uh, from them. Um, um, yeah. in- including including the stuff you guys are putting out, like great deals with guys, you know, license deals, you know, with guys like you. You know, that's great. You know, our artist, Werner Muck, has done a sensational, such a great job with the card art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
games that the wrestlers use them for their Twitter profiles, for their Facebook profiles. In fact, uh, Antonio Cesario, who was Claudio Castagnoli, when we signed him, mm -hmm. was always using his card art for his Twitter profile. So uh, we're, I'm very proud that, that our cards look as nice as they look. To say nothing of the fact that the wrestler stats on the back are very accurate, and we do a lot of research on those. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I have a question. Go for it. Um, how uh, I'm curious about the uh, the actual gameplay of uh, of how it works. How would you describe it? Is there uh, is there another game system out there that you could compare it to, uh, yeah, or is it kind of so. its own thing? But it's a game system a lot of people don't know unless they know sports games, and it's called Stratomatic. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Stratomatic baseball, football, basketball. Have you ever heard I, of that? I'm I'm unfamiliar now. See, so that, yeah, that's all right. But that's but the point is, is it was it's a sports action game that's played on a tabletop, and I played those games, and that influenced me creating a wrestling game that would have that same real fast action. Mm. Uh, you know, a, a, one of our matches, if you played a match right now between Kevin Steen and El Generico or something like that, the match would take place in real time, so it could end in a minute. Or really, it could end even in faster than a minute, but it, it could go 20 minutes. It, so it, it works very nicely that way. Hmm. Very cool. And, and, and was that sort of the big thing you were, you were going for? I know you mentioned before about, you know, sort of the board game aspect that, you know, it, it features wrestling, but it isn't necessarily, like, utilizing, I guess, the what you see in a professional wrestling ring. That, that was sort of one of your main motivators. Um, I, I don't understand. Um, say, could you rephrase that? Well, th just that you wanted to make sure that it was as as realistic to the uh, an actual wrestling match as possible. Absolutely. I mean, you can do anything that happens in wrestling in the game. We have rules for cage matches, lumberjack match, nice. uh, hardcore match. What really, it's anything. We've got a card for uh, Bryce Remsburg, who uh, is a is a senior official referee. Uh, you can in include him. In other words, the things that he that happen in a match when he's the referee for Shikara or Shimmer mm -hmm. will happen in a match that you put him in, too. You, you can have managers at ringside distracting the referee. You can have a run-in by somebody. It's all there. Very cool. That's yeah, you're, booking, you're basically booking your Fed. If you, if you play the Ring of Honor game, let's say, you book that Fed. I call them Feds. I, I should say promotions. But <laughs> you book that promotion your way. It's all up to you. Whatever you think you'd like to see them do, you can do it. Mm -hmm. That's very awesome. Excellent. Yeah, and like I said, a lot of work goes into it. So all our games are compatible with each other. You could have Andre the Giant go against Roderick Strong. Or, you know, you, you could you could have Craig <laughs> who wrestled 100 years ago. I, I was the sand. I, I was looking at uh, so there, there, I was you know looking at some stuff about about your card games and stuff. Uh, of course, I saw you saw them there at the at the WrestleCon. But then somebody was doing an unboxing, and I noticed that I think they had a Chikara pack, but there was also like one or two like Champions of the Galaxy and like a Legends, like maybe like it was like Jupiter, Superfly Jimmy Snuka in there or something. So uh, it, it, so is that is that to demonstrate the cross compatibility there a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, whatever happened at that time. But sure, you could even play Champions of the Galaxy against it, yeah. except there's not the usual same scale. Of course. In other words, um, in, in, the, in, the, in the wrestling games that have the real guys, Andre the Giant really is going to be top tier. Yeah. And he's going to beat um, Green Ant more than the opposite's going to happen, mm -hmm. let's say. So that, that's why I'm saying try to make it realistic. With Champions of the Galaxy, you've got... You know, fighters from all across the cosmos, there's really no way to say have a realistic match between Star Warrior and Andre the Giant because it's, you know, really hard to judge how good Star Warrior really is since he's fictional. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So 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 none of that uh, Ray Mysterio body slamming Andre the Giant kind of crap we get from the video games, right? No, so. <laughs> no, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> So, although the hurricane should be able to choke slam him, I believe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at least he thinks so. Um, so, excellent, excellent. Uh, so, uh, I, I, go I ahead. Have a, I have another question. <laughs> um, so, uh, 
it's it's you know professional wrestling and it's all very professional wrestling influenced uh why what what started what led you down the path of wrestling uh i was exposed to wrestling as a child in a totally different era and i find this to be actually fascinating because when i was exposed to wrestling through my grandparents who were greek immigrants when i was a child they thought it was totally they thought it was real which was very common in those days because i'm talking the 60s and 70s now Mm-hmm. A lot of people totally bought in. And so, you know, uh, I had to figure it out for myself that there was more performance there than actual sport. That's where I was introduced to it. But I became a lifetime uh, fan uh, of it from my childhood when it was still regional, when it wasn't national yet. Uh, it was before Vince McMahon's uh, WWF era. Mm hmm. And so a lot, of, a lot of those regional greats are in the game, like uh, hmm. Bobo Brazil, the first great African-American wrestler. Uh, you, I'm sure you guys are familiar with these names. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, Johnny Valentine, who's the father of Greg Valentine, and uh, Killer Kowalski. And so, you know, the whole history is there. Excellent. In fact, uh, I spoke with Johnny Valentine you know, speaking with all these people to get permission was half the fun of this. I spoke to <laughs> Buddy Rogers' widow, gorgeous George's daughter. Uh, it, it really has been an amazing time. So, so everybody has been uh, kind of personally sought out of, uh, that I see on this list. What's that? So everybody I see on this list of uh, on the legends. Uh, 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 Packs and everything that has been personally sought out by you. Oh yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. They've all signed releases. It's mm. all yeah, absolutely awesome, awesome. And some of them under funny conditions. You know, I, I, I wanted uh, one time I was at a convention the Mountie was at, mm-hmm. and I wanted to get the Mountie in the game. He was Jacques Rougeau, I believe, for a while. Mm-hmm. Does that sound right? He yeah, Jacques Rougeau, the Mountie. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I, 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 you know, I was persistent. I followed him out. He was leaving the convention out to his car. He signed his release on the uh, hood of the car. He probably sat there and went, geez, I'll never get rid of this guy if I don't sign this release. (laughs) uh, I I was persistent with a lot of people. (laughs) Awesome. Was there uh, was there anybody who uh, who just straight turned you down? Oh, yeah. Lots of, you know, (laughs) Terry Funk was so moody with me. I, I met him about five times, and <laughs> he was always, I don't know, I got to think about it, I don't know. At one time, I was on the phone with him, and uh, you said I'm allowed to swear? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Especially when you're talking about Terry Funk. And he's on an air, He's getting ready to go on an airplane, and uh, I said, you know, well, come on, do it. You know, we got all these other guys in there. And he said, I don't know. So I, I tried different things, and I... I told him that I was also friends with people in the Cauliflower Alley Club, which is, you know, a group of old-time wrestlers mm-hmm. that meet in Las Vegas every year. And I said, yeah, so the Cauliflower Alley Club supports this. He goes, fuck the Cauliflower Alley Club. <laughs> 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 I thought, all right, that, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it doesn't always work. Awesome. Uh, we got some commentary from the chat room. Alex out in uh, Long Beach, uh, he says uh, it, that just kind of sold me on the game e uh, uh, it, 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 Well, he says it's a weird way of e but that's, that's kind of what it sounds like. It sounds like this is like a basis for that e fed kind of concept you see online a lot. Um, it also does kind of akin a little bit to, I think, that little bit of that wrestling manager thing because uh, that we had a, 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 a bit ago on the iPhone because it was that kind of card game. There's a system kind of in play here. You're doing your booking uh, yeah. somewhat here. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it feels like it's also slash a little bit of Dungeons & Dragons. I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm very influenced by all of that, including Magic the Gathering. And so, um, but here's what the fans do. They'll play their Ring of Honor promotion or their Chikara one or their Champions of the Galaxy. But they'll go to the message board and they'll all talk to each other mm-hmm. and compare the... Uh, feuds and and the different scenarios they're doing mm-hmm. and you one one might say you know uh oh geez uh now i'm blanking the briscoes have got my tag belts and somebody else will say you know well in my promotion they're really struggling a lot you know they've been losing a lot of matches and that's half the fun of it in a way 
is the comparison with other people and and, and borrowing ideas from them. Even even the unboxing one I saw, uh, there was a lot of commentary in the YouTube comments of of hey, how do you get your guy to level up to this thing to do you know to do to, to, to pin such and such? And there was like a big thread that that came out of there. So the community around this is really really great. Uh, Bobby, and I think Bobby F J Town in the chat. I think he's kind of we've already a little bit. Uh, answered this, but he's, he's asking if you can write your own storylines around this whole thing. I, I think it, this is pretty obvious. You're kind of creating the whole concept Absolutely. around that, your, your... That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. Um, and I'm trying to figure I, out... I, oh, go ahead. Well, well our, our feeling is this. Um, you you think you can book a wrestling federation? I say federation. I don't know why I'm in <laughs> India. You think you can book a wrestling promotion? Do it. You know, I mean, there's nobody's, and you know what'll happen? Let's say sometimes the dice rolls will give you, here you're, you're promoting this big pay-per-view event, you know, your own pay-per-view event, and you've got Kevin Steen versus, let's say, Jay Lethal, and you're kind of hoping that Steen wins because you want him to move on. But, you know, the dice rolls don't always do what, you know, you want. Mm-hmm. Jay Lethal, let's say, gets the upset. But here's the idea. How creative are you about that? How do you say that that happened? Maybe there was distraction interference now it's time for a rematch between those two you know so there's a lot of uh you know being creative in in, in running these these events is there a dice roll for a dusty finish <laughs> uh there's no dice roll for it that, that would be creativity <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, things happen they just happen <laughs> mm-hmm. um i'm not sure exactly how he means this question but uh but uh, alex out there is asking uh, uh how can we get in touch for affiliate opportunities so i, I think for him he's a, l- a little bit of an art uh, an artist so entrepreneur entrepreneur <laughs> Oh, I thought you were yeah. trying to say entrepreneur. No, no, no. He said affiliate opportunities. Uh, no, no. He's a bit of an artist, so I think I think that might be what he's looking uh, to get in touch with you, or maybe connect you with some other uh, wrestling promotions out there. Oh, he says. Oh no, he didn't answer me on that. So, <laughs> but how can he get in touch with you uh, uh, for whatnot? <laughs> and I don't know whether he's referring to wanting interested in doing card art or what. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't understand it. Yeah, I'm trying to get a clarification here from him. But well, generally, I, generally, if people are interested or, or if there's any, a lot of uh, uh, indie promotions and wrestlers uh, sometimes listen to this program or we pass this along, uh, uh, what would be the best way for them to get in touch with you for uh, perhaps uh, you know, becoming a, you know, uh, a part of uh, what you're doing? Uh, to go to the, the website and, and look at the contact information there. All righty. Excellent. Um, all right, uh, Papa Lunchbox, do you want to deliver the big question? Yes, yes, I do. We do have a we have a big question here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We ask it to all of our guests. We've asked it to the the world's largest wrestling personalities, and uh, and today we're going to ask you, sir, if you could be any vegetable, what would that vegetable be? Oh my goodness gracious! Oh boy, and I'm sorry to have such a boring answer. Uh you know what? I'd like to be a giant talking carrot. That's what I'm going to be. <laughs> that's boring? That's a good answer. That is a good answer. No, that answer. just popped into my head. Yeah, I want to be a giant talking carrot. Yeah. Wow. And I oh, want man, to that's... wrestle in, um, what's that promotion in uh, Kaiju? Uh, Kaiju Big Battle. battle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's think... my goal. That is it right there. Those are some great guys. I got to meet them at National Pro Wrestling Day. I think they would be completely down with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, real quick, I wanted you, uh, you have a t shirt on there. Uh, maybe you would tell yeah. us about that real quick. Right. Uh, this is the Black Sheep Bennett Cole. And uh, I do some uh, managing of indie wrestlers on the side, which mm. is a blast as a, as a, as a guy, uh, my dark side. And it's called the Dark Menace. And as the dark menace, I uh, usually uh, manage heel teams. And one of them was is a, the tag team champions of pro wrestling Rampage. And that is uh, Luscious Rocky Reynolds and the Black Sheep Bennett Cole. And uh, this is the Black Sheep's t-shirt. Excellent. We're going to do playing cards for them, too. that will be coming out at the end of the year. Is that pro wrestling Rampage in Erie? Yes. Oh, I've been up there filming before. Yeah, they came to Jamestown, New York last weekend, and Greg Valentine and Brutus Beefcake were on the card, too. Nice. And 
uh, I managed uh, them in that match, and it's it's a blast. You want to look that up. Uh, the, I love having an alter ego and mm-hmm. uh, a dark side, and that's that's it. That's it. Yeah, there's a, they're a great, fun promotion up there. I think they're generally in the Erie, I guess, that whole Great Lakes yeah. kind of region up yeah. there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're a great promotion, a lot of fun. Uh, they, they have, like, Billy Gunn and Jerry Lynn on uh, when we up uh, this from that spot for Prime, and uh, it, was a, it was a blast up there, right? Real good people. So I, That's another thing I want to do more of. I like to reach deep down to the indies. Mm. And do playing cards and ex- like I, I, I sponsored National Pro Wrestling Day in I think it was February. Yep. And yep. you might have heard about that. Mm-hmm. And that was a great event. I mean, you know, you've got like I say, all these promotions people go, and uh, it's nice to to see the talent. There's so much of it across the country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Excellent. So check them out. Phil Singer Games at Phil Singer Games up on Twitter. Uh, anything else you want to throw out there before we let you go? Anything upcoming uh, you can give no, us a scoop on? You. What's that? I say anything upcoming you can give us a scoop on? We just released Chick Army One, which is a Chikara set that uh, another expansion pack for them. We've got a combat, no, 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 championship wrestling from Hollywood set coming out next month featuring a tribute card. To P- Percy Pringle, who is of course Barris, and we'd already had him signed before, so his untimely death—you know, this was not planned that way. Mm-hmm. So uh, his his card will be coming out for that set. We've got a Ring of Honor set coming out in July, another expansion for them. Excellent. We've always got stuff coming out. I tell people just follow us on Twitter or go to our website. Awesome. Thanks a lot. So they're really cool. I love to see this happening. I love like this concept of, uh, you know, the indies coming out and, and being represented in, in something cool like this. You don't just go to the shows and that's it with indies. Like it's always been in the past. It, it's a lot more than this. Thanks Tom for joining us and, Thank uh, you. and stepping through all the, all the Skype technical issues we've had tonight. <laughs> Hopefully we smoothed over here in editing. Uh, okay. and now with that, Hey, more indie wrestling, it's time for wrestle fan and his any minutes. Back to the studio. No, we're in the studio. We're still in the studio. That, we're not yeah. actually. Thanks for that awesome interview uh, we had, did with uh, one Tom Philsinger of Philsinger Games. It was a fun time. And now it's time for the Indie Minute. Yay! Yay! <laughs> there is stuff that uh, Supertron Media was a part of uh, that happened this weekend. Big, big stuff. Uh, the uh, first being RWA Spring Fling 5. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was not I was not there, but we, we, I will be re- editing the footage <laughs> shortly and then I can report to you on that. Hey, but but <laughs> Obviously, look out for that uh, rwalive.com. Yeah, uh, there is, um, I mean, there is a little bit. I, I, you know, through the grapevine, I heard like some of the stuff that happened, and there's a lot of kind of calling. Well, one apparently, uh, from what I understand, uh, friends of the show Ryan Mitchell and Ryan Edmonds are uh, so hated that they did have to be escorted to and from their car. Oh no! Like, and that people were throwing stuff at their car as they left. Oh man! Yes, fucking uh, West I, Newton, everybody. West Newton, Pennsylvania. And then apparently Cato uh, calling out every other promotion in the area and their fans, and that they would kick their ass. Uh, but again, I didn't see the speech. Promotion this is just what I heard. So, uh, so there's that. But I was also part of the uh, Dustin. Uh, God, I'm messing it up. Batdorf. The, the David Batdorf uh, Invitational out in uh, Massillon, Ohio. Uh, another great, fun show uh, with a bunch of the guys uh, uh, out that way uh, that I don't see in the area too much anymore, and that's a shame. Uh, Juice Jennings, of course, um, and uh, uh, you know Butcher Madrox, who's up in uh, Prime Wrestling now. Um, uh, Jock Samson, friend of the show, of course. Yep. Tremendous Battle Royal. Uh, that he Mick Foley did a little bit, uh, and he gets to be on commentary the second half of the show. Nice again, hey. something I need to listen to. Chachi got to listen to it as we were filming, and he said it was pretty damn hilarious. Uh, so always a great time out there uh, 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 at the River Tree Christian Church out there. Uh, uh, actually, great, great setup. It's always it feel it's the biggest production we do every year uh, because they have the screen and lights and the fog machines and and uh, I, I had a blast uh, actually being ringside with it uh this time uh so uh, but again that along with the rwa are going to be post edits so they're going to be a little bit before they're out um so keep an eye out for that 
And, uh, awesome. That's, that's all I have on that, guys. Uh, RWALive.com, and then uh, look up DBI2 on Facebook. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and the next thing I want to talk about, uh, Sorg mentioned uh, Ohio. Also in the Ohio area this weekend, uh, our good friends at AI Wrestling have an event Friday, April 26th, uh, an event entitled, Damn, It Feels Good to Be a Gangster. Um, very fitting. Uh, the main event for that event will be a six-man tag team match uh, with Nixon members Eric Ryan, Ricky Shane Page, and Bobby Beverly taking on Colin Delaney, Josh Prohibition, and Matt Cross. Uh, that should be a fun one. There's also going to be a pick your poison. Wait, 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 wait. How many tag team names have Cross and Prohibition had over the years? There's been a lot. They're currently going by uh, Euthanasia. Euthanasia. They've been the Burning River Brigade. I, I, oh, I, I think they've those. been something else too, right? They've been a couple, uh, and I believe well they were former uh, AIW Tag Team Champions. Uh, so yeah, uh, that that will be the main event, the six man tag match. Uh, also, there will be a pick your poison. Uh, BJ Whitmer and Chris Dickinson will choose each other's opponents uh, for that evening. Uh, tons of really really great stuff. Uh, if you want more information, you can go to AIWrestling.com. I highly encourage you to check out that event because AI, uh, AIW puts on some uh, really great pro wrestling in the Ohio area, uh, and go check them out. Uh, also, be on the lookout for the next uh, events, the JT Lightning Invitational Tournament, as well as Absolution 8. Uh, those should both be really, really awesome events. Uh, and I'm, the next thing I do want to talk about is the event I went to uh, this past Saturday. Uh, uh, the sh- show I mentioned uh, last week on the show for the National Wrestling Alliance, their Parade of Champions event uh, in Houston, Texas. Uh, I got to say, it was a very, very fun show. Uh, very well done show, I have to say. Uh, it was a tribute to uh, the uh, late Paul Bosch, uh, who was a big, uh, per- uh, big influence in the uh, Houston wrestling scene. Uh, it was a very uh, great night. Uh, in celebration of him. Uh, a lot of great matches. Three championships changed hands. Uh, we have new NWA World Tag Team Champions with uh, Lance Hoyt and Davey Boy Smith Jr., the Killer Elite Squad. Uh, they're now double champions, holding the NWA Tag Titles and the IWGP uh, Tag Team Titles, so international champions there. Uh, tons of great stuff. A lot of really, really great matches. Uh, friend of the show, uh, Ray Rowe, uh, had a very amazing match uh, with uh, one man, Mike Dell, for the junior heavyweight title. Uh, and uh, the main event, uh, Rob Conway retaining his heavyweight t- NWA heavyweight title against Chris Masters. Uh, very, very surprisingly great match. Uh, those two guys, I think, uh, extremely underrated. I was really surprised with how great that match was. Um I, I definitely encourage you, if you uh, see an NWA affiliate event in your area, go check them out, because I think they're doing some great stuff as of late. And uh, it was it was a really, really fun time being there, uh, and it was some really, really awesome stuff. Uh, you can I believe the website is uh, nationalwrestlingalliance.com. Uh, so go check them out, and uh, go celebrate uh, the National Wrestling Alliance. And uh, the final thing that I do want to mention here on the Indie Minute is uh, just a quick note for all the people in the Pittsburgh area, because Ring of Honor will be in Pittsburgh uh, for an event May 11th. It's right around the corner. It should be a very, very fun one. Uh, i got to say I'm jealous, because this card looks very, very good. Um, the main event for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships, uh, Red Dragon, which is Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, nice. uh, will be defending their championships against Jay and Mark Briscoe. Uh, Jay Briscoe, the heavyweight champion for Ring of Honor, and his brother Mark. Uh, That will be an awesome match. Also, uh, Michael Elgin going one-on-one with ACH. So that should be very, very awesome. Uh, If you want more information and tickets, you can go to ROHWrestling.com. And I know a lot of viewership here on the main shows in the Pittsburgh area, so uh, I hope to see uh, uh, you guys make it out to that awesome, awesome event for Ring of Honor. Other thing happening this week, it can go in the minute. That's that's Mm -hmm. fine. Look at that. I got some tickets for uh, some Impact Wrestling Live this Thursday night. So look for me in the crowd. Who knows where. They'll probably put me behind everything since these are just vouchers and they're first come, first serve. And they're Mm -hmm. price level four. Uh, So uh, there you go. So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be out there one way or another and uh, check it out. So Yeah. There you go. And with that, let's go to our other interview. Uh, I had a sit down with uh, one facade uh, right before he uh, got to partake in a ladder fray uh, at WrestleCon a few weeks ago, WrestleMania weekend, of course, with a lot of um, 
cameos, I guess you could say. It got a little crazy. The camera work probably got a little crazy in this one. So go check it out. And then we're going to uh, take a look, talk a little bit more Montreal Theory with one PJ Palaco. Be back after this. I found it! Is he really going by PJ Palaco? Yeah, well, he can't go by anything else because WWE oh. owns it. Oh. Hold on, hold on a second. I gotta save the thing. What do you find? <laughs> I found the photo. Oh, oh yes. yes. What's up, guys? Sorg doing the uh, one-man interviews once again, and look who snuck up on us here in the booth. What is that? What are you doing? That's that's on the floor. It doesn't it, matter. Whatever it's, happens, happens, it's pro wrestling. Pro wrestling. Not even pro wrestling day with WrestleCon. It's facade with us. I don't even know what adjectives go with your name anymore. There's a whole lot, and they're mostly colorful. Depends on where you're at and who's booking you. Oh, that's the truth. So we're at WrestleCon. You've been working some stuff over the weekend. I know I saw you last night at Pro Wrestling Syndicate hanging out. Syndicate Wars, yes, Syndicate yes. Wars. I did. I think you were involved in the what? The Battle Royal the night before we missed. Yes, uh, I debuted for uh, Syndicate in the Battle Royal, knocking some people out of the the Rumble. Got myself knocked out of the Rumble, but secured a place in everyone's heart in the process. That's a, that's a pretty big show. A lot of big names on there. Was there anybody you were excited to kind of, you know, finally seeing a person up there? Very big. There's like like Bret Hart, Vader, superstar Billy Graham. They had the Briscoes versus uh, the Rock and Roll Express. It's all kinds of madness. Just just madness. Awesome. Now, of course, this is day one here at WrestleCon as I'm talking to you here. There's wrestling. You probably hear the crowd and the noise behind us here. Uh, I don't even know what show's going on. Do you know? I think there are some ladies uh, play fighting in the ring. Shimmer, then. Yes, they shimmer, they shine, and they glow. Hey, look, it's the world champion. Which world champion? Oh, oh, the uh, the Thirty Rock guy. Yeah, the Thirty Rock guy. That's the real one. So I turn around, so you be like, hey, that's that guy. It's like, oh, I think we got him. Shiki says he's the champ one, number one. Respect him. I, I, I didn't like. I walked by. I'm like, oh, look, somebody's pretending to be the guy from Thirty Rock, and and it was like, oh no, that's actually the guy. I'm like, wh wh why is he here? That's the dude. That's the dude. He's the champion. Everybody needs to recognize him as world champion. If you ask Shiki, he would tell you he's a champ one. I spent most of the day yesterday uh, next to Shiki, cutting promos on Vine uh, at his merch table, having people pay him to cut promos to advertise. Such things as their tattoo shop and just to make fun of them because they were carrying around world te television titles and they were world television tag team champions and he he didn't even want to disrespect people for the most part. He's just like, oh no, I like you. And they're like, no, no, they're paying so you can make fun of them. He's like, oh no, no, I like you, I like you. And then someone walks by, he's like, Shiki, you're number one. He's like, I respect you, I respect you. He stands up, gets all crazy for no reason. Shiki's the man. Team Shiki. That's awesome. All right, you've been bouncing around uh, WrestleCon here. A lot of wrestling fans. Then there's Nikki Valentino. Hey, he's a, this is your your uh, introduction to the Wrestling Mayhem show. Welcome. Nikki Valentino, let's see them Zubaz. Yeah, yeah, check out these pants, guys. Hold on, let me get around yeah. here. There yeah, you no go. More working. No more vacation. What are you, you're vacationing, right? Vacation. Does that mean you can't interview about pro wrestling? No. That's my girlfriend. Honey, come here and ask. Hey, you talk about pro wrestling. Oh. The people demand her, but she gives them none. And today, that's what I'm going to do. Nicky Valentino, ladies and gentlemen, there. Uh, we should know better than give him the microphone, really. Come on. Look at these pants now. These are, the, these are the real deal. These are the real deal. Flashy electric salmon. Electric salmon. Can you even deal with that? Yeah, Ninja Turtles, Turtle Power. Mike Sword has the same... Dang shirt! I did wear the same shirt last night. It's it's amazing. My mother my, my mother gave it for green. It's all oversprayed like brick walls, ninjas, whatever, dude. It was a birthday present from my mother. Oh, I love your mom. <laughs> I'm sending the I'm sending this one to my mom now. I miss the work. Now I'm not. All right. So oh. so so. What do you got? What, what else you got going on here? You had Pro Wrestling Syndicate. What else is coming up for you? Oh, I I can plug all day, brother. I can plug all day. Plug uh, next, no, tomorrow we got uh, Dragon Gate USA here at WrestleCon, day number seven. Nice. Um, being a ladder fray. There's gonna be wait a fray? Oh yeah, it's a fray. 
There's going to be me, the Young Bucks, AR Fox, Samurai Del Sol, Uha Nation, Christina Von Eri, and me, because there's what? ladders involved. Christina Von Eri? Yeah. She has to test her might against the men's. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Yeah. So then on top of that, what do we got? Next week, there's uh, IWC. There's Meadville and IWC. All kinds of crazy madness. Roddy Piper, Vader, Gold Dust, all that going on. I'm fighting Kid Cash in, uh, what is it, Newell the next day, uh, April 14th. Week after that, uh, what? We got Prime up in Cleveland, and then Chalanga Mask up in Chicago, Ucha Libre. After that, 26th, fighting Christian York in Beckley, West Virginia. Next day, Remix Pro Wrestling. The Creeper Jason Gorey and Chance Prophet, the anti-heroes against me, Shane Helms and Mighty Molly, the uh, Mean Green Dream Team. And uh, I mean, I think that's enough for now. That's a lot. That's a lot. Excellent. Big so, popping. so the big question, I don't think we had a chance. We had kind of a different interview with you last time with uh, Shilo, of course. So let us know, Facade, if you were a vegetable, what kind of vegetable would you be? A vegetable? I'm very particular about vegetables, and I don't really like them. I don't like the greens, although I am a green guy. Um, I'd say a potato. Potato. Very, very starchy. Very starchy. And below the ground. You're underground. Very underground. Deep below in the ground. And I have eyes everywhere. But even more importantly, let's say hi to Cody Knotts, director of Pro Wrestling vs. Uh -huh. Zombies. <laughs> Cameo here. I, how you doing? Good. Uh, this is the most cameoed interview ever. So, hey, plug it. I, I'd rather I'd rather have you show board to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But uh, to tell us what what do you guys what are you doing over there? We're promoting our film. Uh, we just released the trailer. We've had over seventeen thousand views in four days. So things are going well. And you want to see facade? You want to see him do some amazing stunts? Awesome, awesome. Go check it out. I just checked out the trailer. I love it. I love it. I think it's looking great. Uh, so everybody, check out that trailer at Pro Wrestling versuszombies.com and uh, with that for Facade and everybody that, that, that appeared on this interview, holy crap we'll see you guys back to the studio that's a con no <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's arguably more offensive really? Yes. Ow. Yes. Ow. Yes. yes it is because yes. it's yes. a baby black person it's how, a, how it's is it a, more offensive? and you look screen too because of it uh, yeah, also you're a tiny <laughs> half a man <laughs> according, according to uh, this weekend to Mr. Brandon Stroud, I'm Austin Aries sized. I, I, I was thinking about about that we should have like a Mayhem Show classic episode and like play the old intro um, that We're I did. WrestleCon, Secaucus, New Jersey. We are exploring the Montreal Theory, courtesy of MontrealTheory.com. Somebody who uh, knows Brett and Sean, Vince, Earl, the whole cast and crew very well from his time there. He is just incredible, also known as Aldo Montoya, PJ Palaco officially. Uh, PJ, pleasure for you, for you to uh, join us here. How are you enjoying WrestleCon? Uh, it's been a great event. Uh, WrestleMania weekend, always exciting, and uh, just fans from all over the world. I'm just happy to be here. And all these fans have various opinions on what happened in Montreal in November 1997. Was Brett in on, are we full of crap? Where does the line get drawn between fantasy and reality? Uh, PJ, you obviously have been in this business a long, long time. You have a valuable opinion, much like the Carinos and the Ravens and the Kevin Kellys and everybody else. What is your take on the Montreal screw job? I, uh, I personally believe that it was uh, the most well orchestrated work in the history of the business. Um, it was just very odd to me that Brett was there with a camera crew to document the whole thing. The way it went down, it just, in hindsight, all these years later, it was just uh, the perfect storm, and we just don't get those very often in, in the world of uh, sports entertainment, pro wrestling. So uh, that's just my humble opinion, and uh, I don't think anybody else was in on it besides Vince, maybe Pat Patterson, and uh, Sean, and Brett himself. It's, it's very interesting to me, uh, doing my research for this. Now, you have your doubts. Uh, you obviously have been very close to the click in your time. Uh, unofficial member, if not official member at some point. Uh, Kevin Nash on this disc has his doubts. Sean Waltman on this disc has his doubts. E even Shawn Michaels had a line or two that was a little iffy. Do you have any insight as to why all the click members, Sam, Sean, and Hunter, seem to think there may be more than meets the eye? That's very telling to me. I, I just think, I mean, this business is a very skeptical business anyways, but uh, 
I, you know, after after being removed from it for so many years, it's just uh, how can you can't help but think of it, you know, and uh, and that's just my opinion. I, I think uh, Sean Waltman and uh, Kevin Nash have a you know have insights, but I don't think uh, Shawn Michaels would have smartened any of them up to something like this. I think it was uh, groundbreaking, and it really was the start of the Attitude Era and what they were heading into to compete with WCW and ECW, and uh, guess what? It worked. There you go. PJ Polacco has his theory. He's got a little circle involved. We talk about maybe it's just Vince and Brett. Sean's not clued in. All these different theories are on the Montreal Theory, montrealtheory.com, digital download, DVD. Let us know your theory. We're here with PJ Polacco, and it's great to see PJ, PJ Polacco looking so good, doing his DDP yoga back on the straight and narrow. You're one of the good ones. You're a great guy. I'm very happy to see you as good Thank as you are you. today. Thank you. It was my pleasure to be here. Montrealtheory.com. Get it. Hey guys, we're back. Thanks to PJ Palaco for talking with us on the Montreal Theory and Facade and Nikki God. Valentino and uh, Pittsburgh or a pocket uh, the Pro Wrestlers versus Zombies. <laughs> There's a lot of misses on that one. Oh, sorry. Uh, go check out that trailer, Pro, uh, Pro Wrestlers versus Zombies uh, What's going on? Uh, yeah, we thought it's a little something different. What is your? Uh, well, this is, this is the part of the show where we do a remember when. <laughs> and when I'm not stepping on my intros, uh, as I'm about to tell you, <laughs> oh, this thing was going downhill fast. Uh, no, you know, I thought about it. That'd be interesting to say, what was your first kind of interactions with Ring of Honor? You know, where did that come about for you? Um, and what were your kind of earliest memory of that? You know, it was kind of, you know, coming back here to the Pittsburgh area, uh, you know, guys like, you know, myself and LB and Riz have an opportunity to maybe go see it here. Uh, it, and it's all kind of, I mean, it's the number three, you know, it's kind of making a big deal right now. Uh, where did you first hear about it? Uh, what about you, Riz? Oh, um, the first time that I learned about ROH was the first, was around the same time that I originally started going to indie federations. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the matches that, one of the characters that I saw on the IWC promo was a guy by the name of Delirious. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I'm not, I wasn't, privy to the indie scene so I didn't know who this guy was so I looked him up and I saw that he was facing the same guy that that will be that will be his opponent at um, No Excuses which was uh, Matt, Side Matt Seidel Evan Bourne for the uh, for the lunchbox there um, but who? use fucking slave name son I am using a slave name son Son, <laughs> father, but Kenny, kinda... Kitty, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that my first. And this is gonna sound like I'm a wrestle fan, but the first time I saw ROH was on YouTube. Oh, no, look at no, that. even no, wait, 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 wait. I want, I want to, I want to backtrack. It actually wasn't YouTube. It was LimeWire. <laughs> Whoa, I'm sir, breaking that sir. out and I'm probably going to get arrested for saying that but I don't care that was my first time a full match and it was awesome and I got hooked right there with Delirious and with everybody else in the ROH fan, like, area so I saw guys like Samoa Joe and Colt Cabana and, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and all these other guys like uh there was one more that was on there, but I couldn't remember who. But I just kept watching it, and I can't stop watching it. But after a while, it, then it started, and, you know, guys like uh, Samoa Joe left, uh, CM Punk left, everybody good left. Delirious is still there, though. But he's, but, and he's awesome. But it seems like everybody just scattered away as well. Mm-hmm. To the wind, to the wind. What, what about you, Russell fan? Uh, my first exposure with Ring of Honor. Uh, this will surprise many people. I used to go on message boards. Um, oh, yeah, I used to be that cock. asshole. Um, and, and this was before the Mayhem show, and uh, I 
uh, remember someone mentioning uh, some company called Ring of Honor, and I was like, oh, what's more, this? This is more wrestling. Uh, and I s- sort of looked them up, and I saw clips and that of them. I remember I bought a DVD of theirs. Uh, I think it was from 2006. Um, and one of the matches on there was BJ Whitmer against Jimmy Jacobs. Uh, and they were sort of in a hot feud uh, uh, going in there. And I remember watching that match and being like, holy shit, these guys are literally, like, fucking murdering each other. Because they would beat the shit out of each other. Not, and it, it wasn't, uh, I think the match I saw, it wasn't, like, a lot of their weapons-based stuff. It was just them, like, power bombing and, like, literally beating the shit out of each other. It was pretty amazing. Um, and I was thinking, oh, like, this is a group that's very, it, they're much more intense. They're much more, you know on the edge of things, you know, it's, 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 it's not the stuff you saw in WWE or TNA. It was, it was very different. Um, and I started uh, to follow them a bit more, sort of, you know, follow their storylines enough. And, and I gotta say, they've been doing some, they've been doing some really great stuff. I do, I do have to disagree with, uh, Riz a slight bit. Yeah, they did lose people like Samoa Joe and sort of uh, their top guys, but it's funny with Ring of Honor how, uh, you know, anytime they'd lose somebody, there'd be another person to sort of fill that spot. Uh, I think they had a great job of sort of elevating people up because, you know, they were the WWE and TNA picking grounds, really. You know, a lot of people, you know, mm-hmm. they picked off a lot of guys, but usually, you know, for every Samoa Joe and for every Nigel McGuinness. Uh, say it. Or, say it, Russell fan. Say it. I say know what? you're waiting to. Say it. I wasn't even going to mention that first. Uh, for every Shit. and for every Brian Danielson, because you are because you are right. A Chris Hero and a Claudio Castagnoli, okay. and you know a you know Roderick Strong and a Tyler Black to you know eventually move up. And he okay, he's been there for six months, Riz. I'm not going to fucking do that. Okay. <laughs> he had the fucking TV match. Yeah, he did, and he's doing some cool stuff. And because I like a wrestler, I have a boner for this person. <laughs> hey, ain't, ain't no shame in a wrestling boner. I got a fucking Wade Barrett boner, just half as big as my girlfriend's. Great, great Kali wrestling wrestling boner. Kali yeah, boner. Yeah, you like horrible wrestlers, Riz. <laughs> you like horrible wrestlers. How do you like you that, like- motherfucker? Oh, ACH is right. a yeah. piece of shit with legs. Yeah. Suck on my dick. You watch ACH versus Michael Logan when they come to Pittsburgh, and you get the biggest boner you've ever gotten in your entire fucking life. Dude, I'm getting a half chub watching Nice versus Elgin Lawler. That should not have said that. Fuck part. yeah! Hell, why? Elgin, nice Elgin, Elgin and Nice is a fan. Elgin and Nice are chub worthy. I like the part of the show where we talk about our erections. <laughs> <laughs> LB, how'd you first get your ROH boner? Well. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I've, I've been sitting here off. thinking about it, and I can't remember which came first, whether it was TNA or if it was Ring of Honor. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was TNA. I saw you know, a few interesting clips which introduced me to AJ Styles, very impressive mm-hmm. AJ Styles, which yep. led me to looking for more of his stuff. And like Riz, I turned to LimeWire, and I still have an amazing <laughs> match, AJ Styles versus Jerry Lynn, uh, in a high school gym in front of 12 people. Uh, incredible match between those <laughs> two. Um, but uh, it was it was definitely early, early on in, in Ring of Honor. And uh, I was in it, I was into it uh, in what I felt was the glory days of Ring of Honor, when you had mm-hmm. uh, people like AJ Styles, and you had fucking Samoa Joe, who originally originated the champ is here, and that fucking uh, Will Smith, Muhammad Ali song. Uh, I think it was LL Cool J. Doesn't matter. Um, you had fucking Low Key and the Rottweilers. Uh, you had um, uh, Brian Danielson was part of it. You had you had uh, fucking uh, what's his goddamn name? Daniel Chris Daniels. Chris, is that his name? Chris? Yes. Yeah. Fallen Angel. Chris. Dan- yeah. Yeah. Uh, you had them. It, it was it was a great time to watch Ring of Honor. It wasn't very big, but you had just incredible talent that you knew like was really going to go somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere very big, and you did have your early on. You had your Delirious and your Matt Seidel and your um, slave name, people like that. Slave name. You're right. You're right. No, I, you know what? I think no, that, what? Is that, that, that now. No, yeah, because you're that right. motherfucker you're right. isn't going to be employed for right. about a week longer. 
Excellent. So fuck him. Sorg, what about you? I think, uh, I really think, again, it's kind of blurry, like, that first introduction, because I heard about it, didn't really, like, I'm not guy into it, but saw some, and I don't know how I saw it. I don't think I, like, maybe I saw some YouTube clips, but I know my introduction had to certainly have been you, sir. Uh, yes, when we were first starting Wrestling Mayhem show, you're like, oh, this is, this is do Samoa Joe and, and stuff like that. Um, and then it kind of led into like going to IWC and seeing guys again that you were telling me about, like Low Key and R- Ricky Ray, as like Delirious, yeah. and yeah. kind of falling through that rabbit hole until finally I actually got to like I never really like got a bunch of DVDs or borrowed a lot or rented a lot or anything like that. I picked up a couple before they were Stars ones that were more FIP but kind of the same idea, right? Um, but, and then finally got to see, uh, one of the final battles, uh, I want to say 08 or 09, whatever, whenever the hell it was, I went out there, um, uh, with Mad Mike at the, at, at Hammerstein Ballroom, and it just blew my mind <laughs> how this was, and, and, and I just, it, I, I, I don't even know. Again, I think TNA kind of came first for me. Uh, checking that out in the long run, uh, but then that like we followed some of those names back, you know, like there's that weird kind of trail, you know, that that back and forth between the two of them because I mean none of the stuff was consistent, you know. There's still like I, what was it? you hear CM Punk, like I remember that CM Punk being in a match, you know, there when we were watching the pay per views when ICP was on them, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know apparently that's the one time he one time he went there and didn't even get paid for it with Cole Cabana. You know, I lost opportunities, right? So, excellent. So, there you go. Tell us, what what's your uh, Ring of Honor introduction? Let us know on Twitter, at Mayhem Show, on the Facebook or Google+. Plus. Hashtag the show, hashtag WMS366, and let us know. How did you, uh, you find, or did you just discover Ring of Honor now that they're on TV all over the place? And with that, let's go to Bad Mike's Minute of Mayhem. I'll get a little bit of round table going. Greetings, Mayhemers. It's Matt Mike, once again with your Minute of Mayhem. As you can see, I am rocking my emotional AJ Styles look. Um, so Impact uh, had AJ Styles return to action, and I gotta say, I liked his more aggressive style. Uh, if you didn't see his match with James Storm, I know it's an AJ Styles match with James Storm, but this one was actually kind of good, so uh, give, it a, give it a watch. Wasn't too bad. He debuted a rolling deathlock, too, which is kind of cool for AJ. Um, also on Impact, run-ins, 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 run-ins. Um, it reminded me of the WCW when the NWO was around and in all the bad ways. Um, just got me wondering the questions I always had in WCW. Like, if WCW hated the NWO, if TNA hates Aces and Aids so much that they have heels talking about how bad they are, why don't they just have the entire roster swarm a and beat the crap out? Food for thought. But, um, Raw actually was pretty decent last night, I thought. The London crowd, we knew was going to make everything better, obviously. And, uh, well, I mean, Taker. Fucking Undertaker, man. I, I was a little worried. I was a little worried that it wasn't going to be an actual match, but it was. Uh, so let's dish out Mad Mike's three stars of the week. Third star is going to go to Team Show Off. Yes, Team Show Off. That's what I'm calling them now. Because Dolph Ziggler, Biggie Langston, and AJ all won their matches. And AJ playing Possum after a super kick was fantastic. And AJ and Caitlyn, if they have Extreme Rules, if it's an Extreme Rules match, which it definitely could be for those two girls, that would be so much fun to watch. And then AJ and, K- AJ and Dolph will be a power couple with titles, and it'll be fantastic. Um, star number two goes to the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla, and the Tango Man from The Last La Mancha, or something like that. But Chris Jericho, of course, come on. First on, he put an excellent match with Dolph Ziggler, as they always do. And then he danced with Fandango's dancer, which... I was gonna. I was waiting until they brought in Jericho's dancing with the stars bit, because that's a given for this gimmick with Fandango. It's a given. That's what the fu- that's what the whole feud should have been about. And uh, number one star 
go see Undertaker. Because, as noted back here, Taker has two matches on Raw in the past three years. Brock, Rock, and Triple H. Goose egg. Big zero. I think I'll, I think uh, Ricardo Rodriguez has more matches than uh, Brock, Rock, and Triple H, actually, which is really sad. Zeb Coulter actually has more matches than all three of them, too. Which, by the way, I didn't notice this, but the Raw from the Izod Center back, in the day, uh, back two weeks ago, you guys never saw, actually, Zeb Coulter did get in the ring and did wrestle. Granted, he walked in and plotted awkwardly and stomped Del Rio like three times before tagging back out. So he literally was the commercial break. But it was still funny to watch because he waddled like a weeble. It was great. Um, yeah, but that's it for the minute this week. Peace, bitches. Thanks, Mike, for that minute of mayhem. All right, let's go to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bobby of J-Town has compiled once again the comments from the unwashed masses. Uh, again, these are from the WWE's Facebook. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, you want this one? I, I want to do it. I All haven't right. got to do this, this right. segment yet. Go for it. Okay. <clears throat> Shield in home of just ducks. You sucks. Smiley face. Your name will, 1L, be home of destructions. Capitalized N and S on that. Yeah. Question mark? That, that means they really mean it. I, I don't <laughs> even know what they what. Okay. Shield sucks. Dot, 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 dot. What they fight isn't justice, but jungle justice. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is that like the jungle fever? Jungle, Jungle Justice, Justice is actually Power. the name of my cock. That's like a, uh, that's like a, uh, a season of the Power Rangers. Jungle Justice. Power Rangers. Yeah. Jungle Justice. I think it is, actually. <laughs> CM Punk sucks just like them, so he can be included in their sucker team. SMH. You know what? I got a question sucker for you guys. What the team? fuck does SMH stand for? I think it stands for suck my hand, but I don't understand why that's so <laughs> popular on the internet. Shake no, my heart on. Is no, it suck a, my hand? It suck, suck my, my hand. It suck my head. Hmm. No. And finally, finally, uh, does Ryback look sixty six years old? <laughs> question mark. Question mark. Uh, yes. Probably. Probably. Yes, he does. Uh yeah, yeah. So with that, with that, this has been the wrestling Mayhem show. No, 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 no. We, yeah. Like, no. And so raw last night in London, like we talked about a little bit. We we talked about a lot of this stuff, but yeah, it didn't feel like a good London show. I expect more out of you, WWE like in a, London. Felt like a raw. It felt like that a raw wasn't, that wasn't live. Yeah, it felt like good raw. It was raw. Yeah, it was a good it was raw. A good raw, but it wasn't a raw in London. Raw in London. London fans are known for their wildness. Mm-hmm. They only had one cabbie on the on the stage. Yeah, where was the phone booth? It really, was there. Yeah, it felt like they phoned it in for being a foreign. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, it's bigger oh. than the inside. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's. I mean, it had its good moments, but it just felt flat. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. they, like, they, they cheered for the wrong. It sounded like they cheered for the wrong thing, but they were hot the entire night. You know, and we have, um, we're, we're going into, of course, a pay-per-view. It feels like the pay-per-view is forever away. Yeah, I, is it is sweet? <laughs> it's like May 19th. <gasps> May 19th, <gasps> that's my mom's birthday. Why'd you say that? I know, and he's Why trying not doing that, shit for, for it. May I, 19th. Well, it, it feels like it was so far away because we were just constantly bombarded with WrestleMania stuff. Yeah, like nonstop from the Royal Rumble on. Mm-hmm. That now there's this break and we don't know what to do with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, usually, because mm-hmm. usually manias, you know, they do mania early April and then they'll do the next pay per view sort of later April. Yeah, <sighs> but they but they push to the second week in April, so that must have screwed everything up. So you're gonna have some really jumbled up pay per views later in the year, probably. Wasn't wasn't there one in there that was canceled? Didn't Maybe. they cancel one? Might be. I haven't seen the the schedule lately. WWE people. probably that Capital Justice bullshit. Remember that? I don't think they're going to. Are they going to do that again? They didn't do it last year. They didn't do it last year. They just did it that one year because they happened to be in Washington they, D.C. I thought they just did it with our truth because they wanted him to feel special. Yeah, you go. <laughs> you that get your own pay per view. 
You get your own title match. Congratulations. We're doing it in Washington, so we don't seem like racists when, you know, one of our empo- former employees is campaigning. Yeah, the only weird point is uh, in October, they're going to have to over the limit on October 6th and Hell in a Cell on October 27th. So, um, other than that, everything is month to month. looks pretty standard. Mm. So, did they drop a pay-per-view somewhere? Yeah. Somewhere. I don't remember which I can't one. Remember Cause, cause, yeah, because yeah, typically... Like Was it like something? Fatal 4-Way? Typically, Revengeance. they were going to have... Like, we would have two in June, or we would have two in May. Or we would have WrestleMania and whatever's next in May. So, now, is Fatal 4-Way still a thing? No, I don't think so. What about Night of Champions? Night of Champions is in September. SummerSlam August. Money what in the about Bank. Vengeance? Payback. Payback is probably new. Vengeance. Payback is new. Vengeance is gone. Yeah. We still have TLC Survivor Series and the other ones that I mentioned. So there you Money go. in the Bank. Woo-hoo! Um but yeah, there's wow. no no way out pay per view that returned last year. Um Oh yeah, I forgot that shit returned. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's uh, it's like it's kind of an odd mix up, but I like that they're they're lessening it a little bit. They're just kind of toning it down, and I guess trying to find that sweet spot with the pay per views. So, um, yeah, you know what? They should bring back Tuesday in Texas. Uh, <laughs> Taboo I, Tuesday. I would not go to it. <laughs> Do you I'm go to for it? the in your house DVD. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, is Todd is Todd Pennington on there? I hope so. God, I hope so. Oh, I want Todd Benning. <laughs> I want him to sing during the entire time. And nothing. with that, <laughs> I got nothing from that. Okay. It was ingredients. It was a it was a silent ingredients. Everybody just kind of not like Your face. Uh, yeah, yeah. Todd I don't Pettingale. remember Todd Pettingale singing. So what? Doesn't ring any bells, bro. Has anybody I mean, been? Has anybody been listening to the uh, wonderful Steve Austin podcast? Yes. I haven't got a chance to, but it sounds amazing. And it is. Um, it, 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 the second episode I listened to, of course, with uh, Shawn Michaels. And then about halfway through the third episode, because I couldn't take Steve Austin talking about his mani petties much longer. Um, <laughs> that happened. So, yeah, that happened. Uh, so, so are we happy with that? I mean, do we need Steve Austin uh, for an hour in our lives every week? Does that make up for not yeah, having him on TV? something. Yeah. I mean, a lot of guys it's, are. It's not like he's just going, I'm going on my ranch. There's, there's something. And the other question is, do we, can we blame uh, Cole Cabana for this? Because we got oh, that. Uh, Hurricane's doing a podcast, oh, no. which is apparently a video show, as I found out when I tried to subscribe to it on iTunes. Um, uh, I haven't checked it out yet, but I think Paul London's doing one. Uh, I, everybody's kind of uh, trying to do their one? To throw their hand in the podcast. Uh, the, you know. the one, uh, well, the podcast, yeah, that's Cool Cabana. But for YouTube and all that stuff, Zack Ryder. Okay, okay. Because he was the first to put it on the mainstream. He was the first mainstream he was. guy. He was. Even though our friend of the show, Johnny Gargano, was there first. Yeah. It was him who took it to an HNL. Mm-hmm. Whole nother level. HLA? HNL. Whole nother. Whole, whole starts... Whole in that case would start with a W. It would be W-H-O-L-E. H N L. <laughs> HNL. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm going to give you that one, sir. Words are fun. No, shut up, Russell. So, so, shut up. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and all right. I, 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 obviously, I, it's getting late. And so I, I, it's past my bedtime. I can only close the show before we go to our usual thing with this. Yes, Zigglypuff. Zigglypuff, which was even Zigglypuff. which was even shared on the WWE's Pinterest page. Why not? Why not? Why, why not? Is it gonna screw it? Here, there's Zigglypuff. Have go, go crazy. <laughs> um, we don't, we don't Guys, care. please tell me what did you learn from wrestling this week? I've got one. I love Fandango, but I think he would be much better if he acted like Prince. If he did all the exact same things, but he talked, he talked in a little high voice like this. Mm-hmm. He said crazy things like, 
I'm gonna go dance in the back and drink some Coke syrup. Wait, is he is he gonna slam dunk on Charlie Murphy? Yeah. And make yeah. pancakes. Now let's have some pancakes. Yeah, fucking <laughs> Dango is Prince. That is the way to go. Wow. That's what I learned. Riz, what did you learn? I learned that Great Khali can sing. Uh, <laughs> it's all the videos posted up there. Oh my god. Have you watched it yet, Sorg? No, I haven't had the opportunity. Play it. I, no, I can't. Play it. I'm not equipped. <laughs> All right, hold on. I, hold on. I got the Facebook up here. We'll we'll see what we can do here. But still, it it it's it's brilliant. He does what he does. Every rose has its has a thorn. Oh no! Is this like a WWE thing? Yes, it's exactly. Oh, it's from Cully WWE sings Universe. The <laughs> it, it's the, WWE is finally trolling themselves the way that <laughs> everybody else is trolling WWE. Well, I think they, what they've done is they've 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 realized like they're hiring fans like Mad Mike who worked there for a little bit, and they're like, finally those kind of, those fans are like working themselves in these kinds of positions. There are people, especially with the social media stuff, they're like, we don't understand how this stuff works. We don't understand how they get something viral. And you're getting somebody like us be like, listen, this is what I like. And I think these people are going to like this too. Yes. Uh, Kali, can we do this? I mean, this is, this looks like it's... It's like one of those fake infomercials. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, it's not loading. I, it's not actually literally not playing the video right now. That's okay. Uh, but it, go, go, I, go we, look it's up. It's on Facebook. Kali sings the hits. Um, it's on our Facebook page. But Bobby F. J. Town posted it, so so we have that. Um, it, it will it, it will make your Kali boner glow. And people are yelling. <laughs> people are yelling. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, they're not yelling, sword. Russell fan, what about you? Would you now learn? we are because Russell fan's talking. Oh, you done? Okay. Uh, Russell, I... fan, you have the cutest nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's just adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man, I so love you, need, it. You, you really need to shave. Wow. Okay, whatever. Uh, I sadly uh, learned in wrestling this week that not even the WWE referees watch NXT. Because Biggie Langston was clearly going for the five count, and the ref was just like, nope, wh- wh- why are you staring at me? <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> NXT is not a thing, Russell fan. Oh, uh, it was uh, a thing, uh, and come it's on. magical come and on wonderful, music. and we're going to break Cash's own, own your fingers in it, and it's fucking great, and it's Oh, yep. I learned uh crap, I forgot what I learned. Oh, I learned that Bret Hart did at one time do a Centom bomb. Thanks to I believe Alex Carr is on the Facebook page. No, I love that wait, 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 I didn't look at the thing, but didn't he link uh No the the eight the uh the Bret Hart versus Undertaker versus Dolph Ziggler match? Yeah, yeah, the fan match. Uh, uh that yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was pretty fantastic. Um, oh, it's not loading up there, but uh, he, uh, the, and he posted a hey, yeah, no, he did. And you guys had an argument about, about it, right? No, he didn't. And, uh, an argument? No, I'm right. Bret Hart never did a <laughs> you're, on ne- his life. you're never right, Russell. Fair. Bret Hart oh, never did geez. a cent on his life. From the chat room, uh, Bobby F J Towns hanging out in there. Uh, Man, yelling. I, I can't Bobby. even. I came in. Uh, Bobby F. Jettytown learned that Kali is an international recording artist and that Zack Ryder might soon be a subway artist. Uh, or again. Uh, or again. Wait, wait. Does that mean he's going to be with Virgil? There was an interesting... Yeah. No, you know, Virgil Kennedy isn't even a subway artist. That, you know, he's a subway stalker, okay? Um, <laughs> he's like, can I make it? Well, that was the no, thing. No, Zack no Ryder... Way. Zack Ryder posted an Instagram that said, uh, leaving these Ooh. behind, and it was all of his bro wear. Uh, yeah, did you see hey. the video that, I put, that, we, that was on the Facebook? I did not account? yet. I did not yet. No. He, he, I, he's leaning towards oh. heel. Mm-hmm. And he did come out last he did, he did come out Monday. No mm-hmm. spiky hair. No spiky hair. New haircut. New haircut. This is the... The Dolph, uh, Dolph Ziggler, the uh, Jack Swagger esque, yeah, in its hair, yeah, maybe he's and, joining that cruise. And I hope, and I hope, 
I hope this is a heel turn where he joins up with Zeb Coulter. Because mm. they both have the YouTube channels. Mm. They both have the the, the minds mm-hmm. of, you know, like Zack Ryder is the youth. And then Zeb Coulter can control the mind of Zack Ryder and do good. stuff. Huh? Huh? It sounds really good. Help. I don't. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think it's just like Zack Ryder is like, oh, I need something to get me over. I'm just going to look like a generic wrestler. <laughs> oh, that's LB? Yeah. LB, you got something to say? Yeah, I wanted to talk about something more interesting than Zack Ryder. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about Subway. <laughs> I found out recently that uh, all the meat in Subway, all the lunch meats, it's all turkey. What? You didn't know that? It's all, it's all turkey, yeah. Like, the ham it's is just the good, fucking... It's not even the good part of turkey, either. It's, like, the feathers and... Yeah, well, no, I'm serious. It's just ham-flavored oh. turkey. And it's just, like, roast beef-flavored turkey. It's all fucking processed turkey that they flavor like other beefs. It's all turkey. But, but what, what's the turkey? Why, what's, why? What, why would they do that? Because it's fucking Subway, and they're goddamn evil. They're the fucking <laughs> Walmart of food. But how does how is that? Look it up, you little shit. I thought it would. Wouldn't it how, cost them more money to make? So it's all turkey, turkey bacon. I mean, you know, a lot of people yeah, like like, like seek out turkey bacon. You know, fake bacon. It's all turkey. Look it up. Fake Look it bacon. Up. That's weird. It's gross. It's gross. It reminds me of Zack Ryder. Oh. Hey guys, with that, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, good Stitcher, times. Spreaker, Flip TV, Roku, and YouTube video and audio forums. Good times, good times. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, 412-206-WMS0 to leave a message for us. Uh, or you can buy the app on iOS and um, Amazon App Store. Apps. Hashtag this show, WMS366. Roku. No, it's not. Awesome cast. Uh, and check out all the other shows at SorgatronMedia.com Follow Hope us on Twitter at Sorgatron ages. at the E Riz uh, at DJ Lunchbox at the Wrestle Fan and at Mayhem Show Facebook Google Plus as well for Wrestling Mayhem Show. With that, guys, this for has been when? your Mayhem. Thanks, Tom, Phil Singer. Thanks, Facade, and everybody else that made the show awesome tonight. Uh, Mayhem Show. Out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait.